It's true. She went through all the bins in school. Classy, by the way. Classier than a fake nose ring. She blinged up the phones with glitter and paint from the art room and sold them on. Had a bit of a scare when some crazy girl called me up. Hello? Yeah, hi. Chubby yourself. You phone-nicking, scumbag piece of... Hello? But whatever. Finders keepers, right? Wrong. I'm going to have to take all these mobiles back. Get off! Look, they're, they're important evidence. What is going on? It didn't take Quinn long to find out the whole painful story. I know this looks bad, but I didn't nick the mobiles and I didn't send the texts. So, who did? Quinn hated to see bullying in our school. She couldn't stand the competition. I understand there has been a spate of thefts and fraudulent activity involving mobile phones. Until the culprit owns up, all mobile phones are banned. Anyone violating this rule will face suspension and permanent confiscation of their mobile phones. With the vital evidence locked in Quinn's office, we had to come up with a fast and effective plan. Graffiti in the staff toilets. According to my sources, it says Quinn is a... I don't like to say it out loud. Give me that. Tell the caretaker to meet me at the staff toilet with a big bucket of whitewash. But you haven't given me your comments. That's because they're unprintable. to Mia and a piece of tape in the lock, we were able to gather the evidence we needed. Not Quinn's either, so find the fingers, we find the thief. Starting on the sides. Mercedes, mind answering a few questions about stolen mobiles? I don't have to speak to you. No, you don't. Quinn's making me pay all my customers back, so I'll need that ten quid off you. Guess you're going to the gig after all. No. I beg your pardon? Sorry, but please, just take the ticket. I don't care about the money. I just want to see the gig. It's not a date or anything. But I know you'd like me if you got to know the real me. The real you. Like, this is the real you. A hair extension? Okay. You got me. I knew you were into that emo stuff, and I, I just wanted you to notice me. Right. It would be a pity date. No kissing, no touching, no talking, no... Anything you want. That is the saddest thing I've seen in my life. You need to get some self-respect. There's got to be some mistake. There's no mistake. These aren't Mercedes prints. So what do we do now? Fingerprint everyone in the school? First of all, I need to take these back to Quinn's office before she notices they've gone. We found the same fingerprint on all the unpainted mobiles. It didn't match Jeannie's prints. That's my phone. It is. Look. Here's the text you got. It's Tim's. Give me that. Look at the timing of that text. Tim, what's she doing here? Oh, can't I lend my friend a book? Your friend? Well, kind of. What is this? More threats? Red never threatened you, but you always knew that. While we were in the library talking to Mrs Meeker, 
You sneaked over to where our bags were. You stole Red's phone from his jacket. That's why you were sweating so much. You were anxious that we would catch you. By the time we got to you, it was 12.30. But the text from Red's phone to yours was sent at 12.39, nearly 10 minutes after we first spoke to you. You needed an alibi, so you sent it to yourself. But I didn't steal Zara's phone. I, I was in the library the whole time. Yes, in your usual seat by the window. You saw Zara leave her bag unguarded. When the fight broke out, you seized your chance. You opened the window, took the pole from the side and hooked Zara's phone. Closed the window, replaced the window pole and stuck the phone in your pocket. Which was easy to do in 53 seconds. And then you told the story about the black-haired girl in a yellow coat. What colour of hair? Um, black and a coat. What colour? Um, yellow. You told the first lies that came into your head. It was just bad luck the Mercedes owned a yellow coat. You're making it up. You've got no evidence. I oh, know. Check out these prints. Perfect match. Ugh. So you were the thief? Sorry. Can we still be mates? As if I only hung out with you because April wasn't talking to me. Duh. And that was the point, wasn't it, Tim? You got fed up of wandering the playground alone every break time on lunchtime. You split them up because you needed a friend. Everyone in school had their own little groups and you were left out in the cold. It was so easy to pinch that first phone, wasn't it? And after that, you couldn't stop. How do you know that? Just a hunch. So, to make her friend, you had to make someone else unpopular. You tried to make me as desperate as yours. I had a chance. I thought, if you got to know me, you might think I was OK. Oh, Tim. Yeah? Drop dead, you total collecto text maniac. Uh, so, tell me, Tim. What made you think you could get away with it? It was just so easy. I'm like the invisible man. Nobody notices a geek. Well, maybe they will now. What do you mean? When I run your exclusive story. And it turned out that everyone wanted to know about Tim's life of crime. That week, demand for Mia's newspaper hit the roof. And so did Quinn when she read it. He gave back all the phones and confessed of his own free will. He's trying his best to make amends. You've got to give him another chance. Luckily for you, I'm going to be lenient this time, but I shall be watching you very closely in the future, and if you ever step out of line again, you face immediate exclusion. With the mobile phone ban lifted, normal texting resumed. Zara crossed back to the dark side, which obviously pleased Mercedes no end. Some people found new friends, and some rediscovered old ones. But the main thing was, that Tim had formed a posse of his own in the library. And they say no one ever notices a geek.